What is up my fellow creatives? Uh, today I'm going to talk to you guys about gear because your boy just got a very exciting package in the mail. Okay, this is the long-awaited 16mm f1.4 lens from Sigma. Alright, so I'm going to start unboxing this. The excitement and suspense is killing me. What is the best way to unbox this? Um, maybe where they taped it. Yeah, that's definitely better. So, what do we have? And shout out to Adorama for having this in stock. b &H, I pre-ordered it from b &H, but I canceled it when they weren't shipping it. Um, the day that they had said it was supposed to be shipping, at least not for me. Maybe they shipped it for some people and they told the rest of us it was back ordered. But your boys at Adorama had my back, okay? So... <laughs> Here goes the actual box that the lens is in. Standard Sigma packaging. I have a bunch of different Sigma lens. I've owned a bunch of different Sigma lenses. So their boxing is always like this. I think it's a, you know, pretty decent like packaging scheme that they do. Um, yeah, so when you open up the box, this is, yeah, how this stuff usually is. All the paperwork, um, which is, you know, don't really care about that. Uh, <laughs> and the box, which is also not what I'm here for. So this one, like the 30 mil, doesn't come with a pouch, but you know, I also don't care about the pouches that much either, cause like they're always in my camera bag, uh, which is like sectioned off into stuff. So it doesn't really matter that much to me. Um, yeah, so here's the lens hood. And here is the actual lens. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go grab my uh, Sigma 30 mil to do like a size comparison between the two. Yeah, so this is, let me move these keys. So this is my Sigma 30 mil with no lens cap and the lens hood on it. So let me take off the lens cap off of this. As you can see, the 16 mil, the new 16 mil is quite a bit like larger. It's like much taller a little bit thicker, feels like twice as heavy. So it's definitely not as small as the 30 mil, but compared to like the 18 to 35, which is what I'm using now, it's still small. So this is definitely gonna work on the gimbal for sure. Um, Cause it's not like that heavy. It's heavier than the 30 mil, but it's not like ridiculously heavy or anything. Um, the shape of it, as I'm sure you guys have seen in the pictures, uh, it kind of like comes out from the mount and gets a little bit larger. Um, the focusing ring is pretty big, larger than on the 30 mil. Um, the design is like pretty much the same. Um, this lens can actually take filter threads. Uh, a friend of mine who shoots Micro Four Thirds was thinking about getting the Micro Four Thirds version of this too, because um, some of the wide angle lenses that like Roken on and some of the other companies make, like you can't put uh, like filters and stuff on them because they're so bulbous. But even though this is like a 24 mil equivalent, it doesn't do that weird thing where it has like a element that like comes out and is like very well not weird you know there are reasons for that which we're not going to go into in that video in this video but uh yeah it doesn't have like a bulbous front element so you can put regular filters on here and everything um but yeah that's pretty much it for the unboxing uh the tests and things like that are going to be up soon i'm actually going to be using this lens on a job tomorrow so i'll be able to like come out with a review of like how it actually performs in the real world like pretty soon um so you know you guys stay on the lookout for that
one of the things that I tell people all the time is that gear doesn't really matter. And that's not entirely true, right? Of course, gear does matter or else like, why would it cost so much? Why would we spend money on it? Of course it matters. But there is, um, or sorry, there are other things you can do to get better results other than buying gear. In fact, the chain uh, of things that you can do when you're trying to get better results, a lot of times the most effective things are actually free um, because they have to do with your knowledge and skills. <laughs> so I'm going to use like two parallel metaphors to explain why gear isn't what you should ever be focused on. Um, and then when gear matters and when you should think about buying different or new gear. So. This is something that I see a lot in the photography, videography community, like people thinking that gear will make their videos better, things like that. And I kind of come from like the music world before I started taking photos and all that stuff. I was doing guitar. You know, if you go way back to all my old videos, it was only guitar videos. Right. And something that I learned along my uh, musical journey. Right. Is that you could have a really bad guitar player on a very expensive guitar and they will still sound bad. <laughs> uh, and you can have a really good guitar player on a very cheap guitar and they will still sound good because the most effective thing when it comes to making music or playing guitar specifically for me is like how good you can actually play. It's in your actual fingers, your actual motor skills that you put years in of practicing in order to get better, right? With cameras, it's kind of a similar story. Like, yeah, skill matters a lot, but even in terms of like what you're gonna buy and what order you're gonna buy things in, right? People are always very excited by new camera bodies and lenses and things like that, but actually like it should be the reverse. Meaning, all right, the camera body is like the last thing that's gonna help you tell a good story. Like what actually matters of, like first is like, okay, what are you conveying, right? Then what's in front of the camera? How are you lighting it? Like all that stuff matters more because that's the stuff that's going into the lens and then going into the camera body. If that stuff sucks, right? It doesn't matter that you have a good lens. You're just putting bad stuff in front of your lens that's gonna go into your really nice camera body, which is still gonna be bad. So when you're thinking about what to do and how to be effective, right? And what's gonna actually make your videos better, don't think about the last thing in the chain of events like, you know, like, uh, let, let's put it to you, I'll put it to you this way, right? Do you, like, are you very excited about memory cards? <laughs> like, that's where all your footage goes. Like, are you excited about the new memory card coming out? Is the new memory card gonna make your videos better? No, it's not. That's just where you hold the videos. Similarly, the new camera that you're getting, that's just where the image that comes from outside of the camera is being processed. Same thing with the lens, right? The lens takes in the thing, sends it to the camera, but it can only send what's in front of the lens through that glass and into the camera. So when you're trying to up your production value or like up the quality of your photos and your videos, you have to think about that stuff that has that, well, not that it has nothing to do with the camera body and the lens, but the stuff that comes before the camera body and the lens, like what are you actually shooting? That's gonna make your videos much better than just getting a new camera lens, so on and so forth. Um, but yeah, um, I guess now though, I could talk specifically about like why I got the 16 millimeter lens, right? So when my um, kit lens broke, <laughs> um, I got the Sony 16 millimeter. You guys can see it here. I have the uh, wide angle converter on it as well. Um, that lens kind of sucks, okay? Like, <laughs> I mean, it's been getting the job done for me because it's like, it's cheap. It's a f2.8, but it's not very sharp. The autofocus is like, meh. Like, it's just not that good of a lens. Um, uh, and I was kind of dissatisfied with it, but the reason why I kept it is because I needed a wide angle lens that I could put on a gimbal because the Sigma 18 to 35 that I'm shooting on right now, although it has a wide end, not so good on the gimbal that I have because it's just so heavy and then it doesn't balance well with the A6300, which is what I use most of the time. Uh, and this was just a better balanced option and you can get even wider with this wide angle converter. But when Sigma announced the 16 mil 1.4, I knew that lens was gonna be for me. 
And now I can explain to you why, right? I wasn't just going to go out and just buy any wide angle lens for like no reason. Like, honestly, this is good enough. I might keep it if I get a vlogging camera. Like I'm thinking about maybe getting an A5100 or something in the future. And I might use this on that. Um, but the reasons why, like I had to upgrade from this lens are things that I know from actually shooting with that lens and from knowing that there is a limitation on what I can capture and what I can do with this lens. So for example, because the autofocus on this is like man and the A6300 doesn't have a flip out screen uh, and right now my monitor is being really weird like I have it hooked up but like when I hit record it's like not showing any video I'm gonna look into why that's happening but I didn't feel like figuring that out before shooting this video so I'm just shooting but I know that the lens that's on here is gonna keep me in focus most of the time um, this lens sometimes like it does weird stuff like it like it'll hold focus sometimes but sometimes it's so slow to focus that like you end up like having parts of your shot that's like blurry uh, because it's just taking a long time to focus which is not acceptable for me um, and I have the Sigma 30 mil 1.4 and I know that the autofocus on that is pretty fast so I assumed this one was going to be just as fast I'm going to be running tests and you know doing a comparison between the new lens and this lens um, so we'll see um, how that you know pans out but I've already seen some tests so I know it is <laughs> faster um, and then outside of that uh, this lens although it is a 2.8 which is better than the kit lens right you know 1.4 is half of uh, the numbers in the aperture which means it's twice as good right <laughs> but seriously though uh, a lot of the times and I'm sure you saw it in like one of my other videos like sometimes I can't bring my LED lights with me or like I not that I can't, I don't because I like to try and fit everything when I'm doing like some of my shoots for fun, like in one backpack, like I don't have an assistant. So like everything has to fit in one bag. Like, and sometimes I'm like out in the woods or like climbing up on top of a roof or like, you know, doing stuff like that. Like, and I just want to have just one bag that I'm bringing with me. Right. Um, and when I'm doing that, I can't always bring lights. I am working on that though. I got this small, cool, small little led light and see, Think of, like listen to how my thought process is going like I got this small LED light because I noticed as I was shooting video well this low light stuff some of it isn't working out for me so I need a piece of gear that's going to work for that I'm not going out and buying gear just because I think it's cool it's like stuff that I actually need and I'm looking at getting a new lighting system I'm going to talk about that in another video later because I don't have the money for it right now anyway so it's like not happening anytime soon um, but anyway the reason why I got that lens is because um, I find myself in a lot of like lower light situations and you know I was joking but like it is seriously f1.4 lets in a lot more light than f2.8 so you know I can let in more light the high ISO on 1080p slow motion footage on the a6300 is not that good that's one of the like this is a great camera a lot of people rave about it but that's one of the places where it, like when you're doing that 120 fps and then it's like kind of dark like the footage is mushy it can like get grainy just because the bit rate for that mode is actually not that high uh, and if you guys don't know about bitrate and how that affects your video quality and you want me to explain it leave a comment below um, and thumb this video up so I know I can make a video about that stuff I study computer science so I know like how codecs work like all that like I actually know how that stuff actually works so if you want me to explain it I can I can do that um, you know feel free just let me know uh, <laughs> Um, yeah, so I got that lens because not only did I want something I could throw on a gimbal that was going to autofocus well, I wanted something that was going to let in more light for those situations where like I don't have that much light. Like I now do have like a small LED light. I also have a big one, but it's not going to fit in my bag. Like I have a big panel that I sometimes use for YouTube videos, not using it right now just because I just randomly decided to do that as soon as I saw that the package was here when I got home. But yeah, I can't always bring that with me. So I have a tiny LED light, but that's not always gonna provide enough light and it's not always gonna look good. Sometimes it would be better to just use like available light and things like that. Um, but it's more finesse to do that on a F1.8 lens than an F2.8 lens. Uh, of course, this lens is massively more expensive than that lens. Well, not massively really. This lens, like for what it is, a 16 mil 1.4 lens, like I actually think it's a steal, which is why I got it. I don't always like 
spending that much money on like gear because like I was saying earlier that those aren't the things that are gonna make your videos better like I was like it was like actually like a huge debate for me whether to get new lights because I know that like lights are more important than this lens but I could just kind of, you know, the hype beast in me kind of just wanted to snatch this lens. <laughs> One of the first people to have it. So I'm just going to get my lights later because I already have like when I have to do like bigger jobs, I do have like a big LED panel I can use and then like a slightly smaller LED light and then my really small one that's always in my backpack with me. So it's like I have enough lights to hold me over for now. I wanted to be the first of this. <laughs> well, one of the first people to have this lens. Hype beast. I know. Sigma hype beast. <laughs> <laughs> because I love the 30 mil 1.4 so much I wanted to have this lens too and I've been waiting for it. actually I've been thinking too like maybe I'll sell the lens that's on the camera right now the 18 to 35 so I can get like a vlogging camera and like more lighting stuff stuff like that like get an a5100 and maybe like another like big LED panel or something like that because uh, at f1.4 it's faster than the 1.8 um 30 mil so i have the 31.4 and the 16 1.4 now so it's like a slightly wider range than the sigma 18 to 35 but those are two primes not a zoom so like as i use all these lenses i'm gonna see if i start using the sigma way less uh because um yeah then, then i'll just sell it uh, even though the Sigma is a great lens, it's awesome. Uh, it's really convenient. That's why I use it a lot of the time because it's a zoom and it has a very useful range where you can get wide stuff. And it's like just wide enough and just telephoto enough that you can throw it on there and use it for a lot of different situations. But with these two new F1.4 lenses with like image quality that's the same as this, like why would I need both? So like I'm trying to see if the convenience of the zoom is still worth it. Otherwise, I'll sell it and you know buy the lights I was you know talking about. <laughs> but yeah, um, where was I? Uh, I don't even know. I've been like going off for like or going on for like a really long time now. You guys have a good a good you know life a good day like you know keep being creative keep doing your thing keep grinding keep trying to get better uh and i'll see you guys uh maybe tomorrow maybe the day after that but you know sometime soon